Today, I'm going to teach you guys how to trade calls and puts in Robinhood. I'm also going to give you an overview of what call options are and what put options are so you can utilize both to make a lot of money in the stock market. My name's Henry, if you're new, I worked at Goldman Sachs and I love educating people on options because that's my primary income source and that's actually how I've been able to start this channel. First of all, an option is a contract on a stock. It's a bet on what a stock will do. A call option bets on a stock rising if you purchase it. A put option bets on a stock falling if you purchase it. You may also sell options, which I'm a huge fan of since you collect income doing so. In fact, once an investor learns options, they usually realize how attractive selling can be. And it's the exact reason that I created the Weekly Option Income Academy because that's what's helped me retire and follow my passion. You can find a link in my description for students that want consistent returns. But let's get back to options. The cool thing about options is that they are so versatile. You may pick different dates that you think an event will occur and different strike prices where you think a stock will go. If you buy a call option, you're not obligated to buy the underlying instrument. You simply have the right to exercise the option if it is in your favor. That usually means the stock has risen in value, so it increases the value of your option. When you buy a call option, you have the right to buy the stock at your options strike price. Here's an image of a call option. You can see the call option benefits when a stock rises. In a platform like Robinhood, all you would have to do is go to your favorite stock that you're interested in and buy a call option. It would look something like this. So here is Microsoft stock. As you guys can see here, the stock is currently $232 per share. If I go to the weekly chart, it has been as low as $224 per share. And if I go to the monthly chart, well, it's kind of been going sideways. It was a little bit higher back in December, it was 225. Then we had a little bit of a low here at 213 or 212, and now we're back at 232. So let's say your mindset is, hey, Microsoft is a great company and I think it's going to be going up. So all you would have to do here is click trade Microsoft options. So once you click trade Microsoft options, Robinhood, I'm using the desktop version right now, gives you a whole bunch of different options with different strike prices, different prices, how much they are worth, and different expiration dates. So let's say that you wanna go out maybe two weeks or three weeks. All you have to do is click this drop down menu right here. And let's say we wanna go out to February 19th, which today is about January 26th as I record this video. So it's about three weeks out. You would click that and now Robinhood actually gives you new strike prices and new prices for the options. We're already by default on buy calls. So all you would have to do is pick the call option that you're interested in. Going back to the example, let's say you think Microsoft is going to be $250 in about three weeks and Microsoft does have earnings, so this will capture the earnings week. And again, guys, earnings are when a stock releases quarterly earnings, how much profits they have made, and usually stocks do tend to move a whole lot. So here we are, it's $250 per share is the strike price, and let's say you think Microsoft will go past that. So what you would do here is you would click on the option price over here. This is telling you how much this option is worth or how much it actually costs if you're buying call options. You would click this button, and now Robinhood gives you a little default screen over here and they're saying long call. Long call is just a synonym for buying call option. Here you would spend $2.72 per contract. However, each option contract is 100 shares. Therefore, this is not $2.72. It is in fact going to be $272. And I can prove that because when you continue and you put in one here, you can see here that the max cost is $273. Each option contract is always 100 shares no matter what it is. Whether it's a call option or a put option, it's going to be worth 100 shares. So now, what would actually happen here? How would you actually make some money? Well, since you're betting on a call option going up, it is actually benefiting when a stock rises and you're picking the 250 call, but you're paying $272 or $2.72 per share, your break even is right here. So Robinhood is nice enough to tell you the break even price. So here we have $252.73 everything above that will be pure profit for you. Say the option actually expires and Microsoft stock ends up being $257.73. Well, what that would mean is then you would have $257.73 minus your break even of $252.73, meaning you would make $5. And since you only spent $273 and you made $5 in return, times 100 shares. You have just about doubled your money because you invested $275, but you came out with a $500 profit, so it is nearly a double of your money. 
All right, now that you have seen what a call option looks like, purchasing a call option to be specific, now let's do the reverse and look at what it looks like to buy a put option. Here's an image of a put option. This is the second most basic option strategy where you buy a put option with the expectation that the price of the stock will actually drop significantly below your strike price before the option expires. Compared to shorting a stock where you bet that the stock will fall, where you have to borrow and pay interest, buying a put option is a much more simple process. Each option contract again represents and controls 100 shares, so you stand to benefit a lot if you're right about the option play going in the right direction by the time that you choose. The strike price of an option is where you guarantee that you will sell shares in the future when you buy a put. So let's say that you bet GameStop or Apple, it doesn't really matter, will fall below $100. Well, then let's say the stock falls down to $90. So in this hypothetical trade example, since each option is worth 100 shares, you would actually profit by $10 times 100 or $1,000 gained. Your actual profit, however, would be the money that you just gained the $1,000 minus the premium that you paid for it. All right, so this time we're again gonna look at Microsoft and let's say this time our belief on Microsoft is that it will actually have bad earnings or maybe something will happen where Microsoft again retouches the lows of $212 per share. Well, what you would do in this scenario, again, you would click trade Microsoft options, except this time rather than buying a call option, you would actually click buying a put option. Now again, I'm clicking February 19 and I'm going to be looking at the 220 option right here. So the 220 option right here, is costing us $3.35, but we said that the stock is going to be as low as $212. And here you can see that our break even price is $216. So if we believe that the stock can be 212, then we would actually be profiting $4 because we're betting on it falling. And since 212 minus 216 is $4 difference, you would actually be profiting $4. And because you're paying $333 right here, you're more than doubling your money again. So right here, as you guys can see, the total cost would be $3.30. However, again, since each contract is worth 100 shares, it is costing us a total of $330. And our break even price right here is $216.67. So the way put options work is they're betting that a stock will fall. So now when you're buying a put, you're the person that is benefiting from the stock falling. And of course there is someone on the other side that is betting that it will not do that. However, all you care about as a put purchaser is that the stock hopefully falls before February 19th in this example. And if it falls below $216.62, you begin to generate profit. Now, let me answer some common questions because I taught hundreds of successful students and I've written down their questions. So I'm going to assume you might have some similar questions and I'm going to bet that one of these three next questions that I'm going to be answering will help you. Number one, can you day trade options? The answer is yes, you may close an option anytime during market hours for a profit or for a loss and hopefully you have a profit on your hands if you're going to be day trading options. Many people decide that they want to play a short term option and close it out the very same day. That can be a fine strategy as long as you understand frequent trading will most likely result in a loss. That's right guys, because there are little things like fees that you have to pay for or also invisible expenses like the difference in the bid and the ask spread. Usually you're going to be losing a couple cents when you're trading an option and that is just the nature of options because all options have a bid and an ask and that is actually the same that goes with stock trading as well. That is something most YouTubers or most educational platforms do not tell you. Therefore, when you trade options, you ideally want to hold them for at least a few days or weekly strategy like I teach in my course. I typically trade options on Monday and monitor the trade and close it or let it expire on a Friday. That way, I don't have to stare at my portfolio all week and I can continue making videos for you guys, but it's also a much more simple way to trade options and it allows you to learn from your mistakes and give it enough time without waiting too long like trading something like monthly options. So in conclusion to my most commonly asked question, I think it is okay to day trade options Ideally, you do so once you understand options thoroughly. Number two question I get is, should I pick a call option or a put option and what is the best entry price for this option? If you're a beginner or even an intermediate that doesn't know how to pick an entry price or direction of a stock, let me give you a brief rule of thumb that will really help you decide on what direction a stock may go. So stocks long term tend to go up as long as they're companies that are progressing and growing their cash flows and growing their customer base. Picking a direction is usually best after you form an opinion on a stock that you're planning on investing in. Something like Tesla would have been very profitable to buy calls on because the company has consistently expanded their business and increase their deliveries, thus their sales and their bottom line. 
Therefore, whenever you have bought call options on Tesla, you would have most likely been rewarded because the stock has had a massive uptrend. There is no perfect price to enter a call option. What ends up happening is if a stock goes up or a company is progressing and the stock rises, buying a call option is most likely going to be profitable. But can you always be right and pick the perfect entry price? Um, no, that's actually not possible in the stock market is generally speaking a probability game and not an exact science. Therefore, the market is based on a lot of opinions. So if you have an educated opinion, then you're going to be better off and you're gonna have a better guess than other people and you're more likely to make money in the long term. It's much better forming a stable opinion and some facts behind your reasoning of owning a stock than completely guessing or having some options that you just think are going to be profitable, but you're not actually well researched on that option play. Also, someone with very strong restraint against making emotional decisions is going to be better off because one of the things that you want to do to become a better trader is hold stocks longer and actually not react to short term swings. That being said, stocks have a tendency to rise. That's why calls are traded more than puts and calls have an unlimited upside if you're buying them. Therefore, calls are just a little bit more superior to puts in my opinion, and I have a video on call options that you can see right here. As for puts, you will want to buy them on stocks that are high or have no justifiable reason for being so expensive. Puts are risky because as I mentioned, stocks tend to go up long term. Usually puts are purchased for protection of a portfolio since you guarantee yourself an exit price if the stock market crashes or for pure speculation of a stock falling. Now guys, usually puts are purchased by hedge funds or multi-million or multi-billion dollar mutual funds because they wanna protect their positions. If you have a lot of stock in a company and you buy some puts, you actually guarantee yourself against exiting a stock if the stock were to really drop or really to fall. So puts are a great way to protect a large portfolio. However, they do cost money because you're paying money for a put. Number three, this is the last question I'm going to be answering in this YouTube video. And it is a common question. It is the difference between out of the money and in the money. These are very important terms that you have to know about and they're going to increase your ability to generate money and understand what you're doing with options. Out of the money options are cheaper to purchase. However, at expiration, if it is still out of the money, then you will lose 100% of the premium that you paid for that option. In the money is when the option has gone the right direction, past the strike price that you bet. Congratulations, you're making money. And then in the money option is generally more expensive to purchase, however, at expiration, if you purchase an option and it is now in the money, then you have a profit on your hands and you're a profitable option trader on that specific position. Make sure to check out this playlist right here if you wanna see more videos on buying calls or even selling call options, which I'm a very big fan of. I have both types of videos in my option playlist here for you to learn and master options trading.